My name is Deborah Draper. I'm 13 years old. And I'm Kirsty, and I'm 10 years old. Tell me about your life. So, do you have TV in your room? Do you have mobile phones? Do you watch X Factor? Do you go shopping in Topshop? No, 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 um, no. So, do you ever, like, you know, watch reality TV shows or anything like that? What's a reality TV show? Do you know? No. Who's she? Someone with dark glasses on. Do you know who she is? No. No. Have you heard of Victoria Beckham? Is she married to Mr. Beckham? Mm, don't know her. Do you know who she is? Brittany. What's the surname? Spears? No. Who is she? Do you know who she is? Yeah. Do you think it's sad that yeah. like, there might be girls out there like you who are like looking at these magazines thinking, I want to be like that, this is so cool? Yeah, very sad. And what would you say to them if you, if you met girls like that? I'd ask them whether they're... God's name in vain. Yep. Have you ever coveted anything? Yep. Yep. So you're lying, thieving, um, coveting, blasphemous um, person. Do you still think you're a good person? Meet Deborah Draper, 13 years old and very different from the average teenager living in Britain today. Deborah lives tucked away in a remote corner of rural Dorset. She rarely leaves the farmhouse where she lives with her dad Andrew, mum Ruth and eight of her ten brothers and sisters. I think it's happy. I think it's, uh, we're quite happy as a family. We don't usually go out anywhere. We occasionally go out to a park or we go out shopping, Morrison's, whatever, but we don't usually go out anywhere. We sort of we stay here all the time. It's what I like doing, really. But all that's about to change. This summer, Deborah will spend a few days with her brother at university to get a first taste of what life in the outside world is really like. This is the kitchen. We've got our arger and sink and dishwasher and everything. So this is where we'll do all the cooking and preparing lunch. It must be quite chaotic in this room. Not really, actually, because everyone just gets on doing their chores, doing everything. I mean, there's a lot of noise and everything, so there's a lot of people moving around, but not really. And what's on the board there? What are the are there rules that you have to follow on the board? Those are the Ten Commandments from the Bible. We just um, printed them out and put them up there with a picture to help you remember them. Do you know them by now? Yes, I do. Do you think you're doing quite well for them all? No, absolutely not. This is my room at the moment. Here's Amy. It's a nice Hi. picture, Amy. This is Amy's bed and this is Kirsty's bed and this is Kirsty. Do you ever get to a point where you think, oh, I wish I had just want to be by myself. Mm, sometimes. Sometimes you just get a bit of a headache when I'm just like, oh, it's so noisy. But it's, you get used to it after a while. I mean, to me, that's everyday life. I mean, that's what I'm used to. I don't actually have many friends around here. I like family. My friends are my family, my family are my friends. That, that their king saw soldiers. He stood before Goliath, and the giant that laughed counts. at him. Yeah, and the giant laughed at him. But David didn't care. He said, "Pardon." When we first got married, we were just going to have two children, and that's all we were going to have, and and then spend the rest of our lives serving the Lord. Um, and we then decided because lots of different reasons, that we would allow the Lord to open and close the womb. So we just allow God to give us as many children as he wants to, to give us.
Deborah is the fourth of 11 children, aged between 18 months and 21 years. Her older sister Rebecca married at 19 and is now a mum. At 20, Matthew is the oldest of the boys and the sibling Deborah is closest to. I start with my little kettle, something being with chicken. Chicken, kettle, kettle, kettle. He's just back for the summer from university in Buxton where he's studying to be a chef. Yes. Do you enjoy hanging out with your sisters? No, I really hate hanging out with them because they're so horrible. You know, I never want to spend any time with them because yeah, they're mean and <laughs> sneaky. And, yeah. No, I know I do because um, I love I love hanging out with Debbie and Kirsty and everyone just because they can. Well, Debbie can read my mind, so she <coughs> probably knew I was going to do that before I did because she can read my mind. <laughs> And so, you know, we, we don't even have to say full sentences because she usually gets the end of them. That smarts, that one. Come on then. Yes. Matthew then. won his place at university despite never attending a traditional school. Like all of the Drapper children, he's been educated at home. Five, five, six, six. Well done. So you don't need A-levels and certificates and things to get where you want to go. They don't have pressure from their peers. There's no stress or um, pressure from achieving exams to beat someone else in a competition. They just have to be the best that they can be. I think it teaches us everything we need to, everything we need to know for life. We, we learn, you know, how to read maths, basic, you know, basic maths and English, and, and then we study more. But I, and I am doing... Also, I'm doing speech and successful living, West African agriculture. I, I absolutely just love learning. I think education is, a, is an amazing gift to be able to have an education. And I really, really enjoy doing my school. I'd much rather be homeschooled than go to school. Oh, wow, this looks interesting. Oh, 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 oh. Which way do you think would be third? That's it. We cringe when we hear now that schools are looking at having children from sort of 7, 30, 8 o'clock in the morning till 6, 30, 7 o'clock at night. But why do they build having children in the first place if they're just going to turn them over to the state to raise for so much of their life? It's not a school, it's an orphanage. It is, it is. And then they come home and they'll have a television dinner in front of the television, they'll go out with their friends and when are they going to see each other? We eat together two or three times a day. We spend a lot of time together. We train our children. We can work. How can you do that when, when the state trains them? We don't have televisions in bedrooms. We don't have, we don't have a television per se at all in the house. We've not watched television for about 14, 15 years. We're not completely cut off from the world. We have computers. They are their children on the internet. We believe we can trust them to be on the internet in their bedrooms without fear of, of what they're getting up to because we know who they are we know what their natures are we know what their characters are so no i don't have any worries about them missing out i'm glad they miss out on some of it uh the bullying the peer pressure the um, being led into things that are inappropriate for children to get involved with do you not think about what other kids your age are like no i just live my life you don't ever wonder what other girls your age are doing or thinking about or what they're like? No. Nope. Not curious about? No, not really. Are you interested in fashion? Um, not particularly, no. When was the last time you went to a party? Um, depends on your definition of party. I mean, we had like a birthday party with Mark, or we went to a Christmas pudding party at the Stacey's house. That kind of party, or... What about a party with loads of other people your own age? Um, I haven't been to a party with lots of other people my age. Would you like to? Um, I don't see there's anything special about anyone my age that I'd like to spend time with just people my age. Are you interested in boys? Mm, no. Snogging? No. What do you know about sex? Not much, really. 
Would it shock you to know that some 13-year-olds are doing those things every day? It wouldn't shock me. I mean, I do know that some teenagers are doing that every day, but I, it, it sounds, um, it saddens me, upsets me. That's the word I was looking for, saddens. It makes me, I mean, it's not what life is supposed to be like. What is life supposed to be like? You're supposed to um, belong to your father until you get married and then he'll give you away to that man and you will stay with that man in um, richer and poorer in sickness and in health. Deborah is a strict evangelical Christian. She believes she found God at the age of six and has never looked back. I don't think that she feels that she misses out on anything. Occasionally, I think maybe, maybe she misses out on not having friends and things like that, but on the other hand, she has something so much more amazing than friends. She's got God and she knows that this life is only here for however long you live in it, and then you've got the whole of eternity, so she, can, she doesn't have to be worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. I didn't just follow being a Christian because my parents are Christians. I actually became a Christian by myself. I believe that the Bible is um, the infallible, inspired, inerrant word of the living God. I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I I've blasphemed. I have um, I dishonored my parents. I've hated people. I think we're all wretched and we all deserve to go to hell. I've never actually questioned my faith, you know, or questioned whether it's actually true. Look around you. I don't see a explosion that made this. This is intelligent design. This is created by something. So what are you doing there, Deborah? These are um, tracks which are, um, each of them they've got the gospel message, so you can give them out, or you just like you used to say, "Hey, did you get one of these? It's a gospel track," and then that's a good way of opening up a um, conversation. And we've got lots of different kinds of them. So, like this one here is a um, is a round to it. It's round and it's a to it. So um, people often say things like, "Oh, I'll, I'll speak to God and and do it when when I get around to it," or whatever they say. Well, now you've got around to it, you can you can speak to God, and then again, it's got the gospel on the back. I am called, as is everyone, to go out and witness to people and try and get them saved. Going out in front lines and telling people is a job that needs to be done, so I'll do my best to fulfil it. Well, I can hear them. They're, they're over in the bushes, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Shadows moving over there. Yeah, some on the top. Deborah's been invited by council youth worker Phil to join him on his Friday night rounds meeting teenagers in Bridport. She's decided to take Matthew along for moral support. Do, do you ever um, witness to the children, like tell them about? Um, I don't. I'd rather go in and just talk to them yeah. normal people. What if um, one of them got hit by a car and died that night? Or they'll be there and they'll be like, Phil, you knew him the good news. Why didn't you tell me I'm going to go to hell? It's different in every situation. Sometimes they, they listen to you and think, wow, I can be saved from this. I mean, I'm going to go to hell, but, but I can be saved. Jesus can save me. And other times they just like, laugh at you and think you're crazy and think you're some kind of religious nut. Hello, you right, boy? Hey, yeah. Hello. 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 <laughs> Cara. Cara. Debbie. Right. Debbie, this is Cara. Hello. Hi. Cookie. Hi. Chloe. Hello. Hello. Jazz. <laughs> Amy. Yeah. Paige. Hang on. My phone's ring. My phone's ringing at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah it's about it was, yes. it was the, yeah. No. Tomorrow. She got a I've present. I've got a million dollars. That's no, mine. Hey! It's one million pounds, you idiot. I'm actually going to spend that. <laughs> not getting oh, on, on the back, it's um, got a gospel message um, on the back. Um, have you ever heard about the gospel or anything? 
Um, <laughs> no. Um, what's the fire? I'm so kidding. <laughs> okay. um, do, do you believe there might be a heaven and a hell, maybe? I don't know. What, what do you think someone has to do to go to heaven? Be good. Be good. Yeah. Be good. So, would you con consider yourselves to be good people? Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Look back. Okay. These are um, the Ten Commandments. Um, have you ever told a lie? No. Yeah. 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 No. Have you ever um, stolen <laughs> anything like a pencil from no. school or? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but only if you here killed anyone, no. have you? No. How many cookies you And have you ever used God's name in vain? You know, you used yeah. um, God's yeah. words, yeah. 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 So, by your own admissions, you're um, lying, thieving, and blasphemers. <laughs> Do, do you still think you're good people? Nope. No. no. Right. Yeah. No. no. So, yeah. So, 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 Why not? So, so um, <laughs> if you're not a good person, do you still think you'll go to heaven? I don't know. I don't yeah. So, do you know what God did so that um, so that you wouldn't have to go to hell? What? He actually set, sent his son Jesus to earth, so, and then he died on the cross. He was crucified, and then God punished him for your sins. Do you think you maybe ought to um, ask God to um, to forgive your sins and repent from them yeah. and turn Praying. from your sins? Praying, yeah. Just, yeah. Has, it, has anything I said does it make you think, well, maybe I do need to have my um, sins forgiven? Yeah. <laughs> I think what she was saying was true, but I don't think any of us here believe in God. So it's a bit weird to think oh, that God created the world and God says if we're going to go to heaven or hell or... Um, like he decides for us. I don't think we're quite. I don't know. Do you yeah. agree? Like, okay. or like my nan and granddad are like Christian so and I went to church with them when I was younger, but I didn't really believe in it that much. Because so. you didn't know when you were younger, did yeah. you? Yeah. It's it's obviously like meant to like mean something, but you don't. Nobody actually knows if it's true because nobody's ever been there and come back if you think about it. <laughs> Those aren't real. Yeah, they are. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. That's lies. Yeah, they're not real. Have you got this? Yeah. You smoke or drink or anything? No, I'm only 13, so I'm not taking. So legally, I'm not allowed to drink. And um, the Bible says um, to not look upon the wine when it becomes fermented. Yeah. Okay. You're so clever. Yes. Okay. What's the answer to this? It says how they made that gap in the that exact same size and the same. Turn that around. Very often um, when people say, oh, it's really hard to, um, to um, witness to people, I always think, well, actually, it's quite easy. It just takes a little bit of courage. I mean, I don't mind offending someone if they're saved for eternity. I don't mind offending someone for that. You'll speak to God when you get around to it, right? Yeah, you've now got around to it. Did you have a good time, Nancy? Yeah, I did. It was really good to see you just out talking to them. It's really shiny. It's fantastic. Mm, it's kind of chilly, isn't it? Did you think it went well, then? Yeah, I think it went really well. You know, there was one point when I walked over because I thought, well, how is she doing? She was just talking, she was moving her hands about, just <laughs> chatting, and she just looked so at ease. <laughs> It was just ridiculous. As opposed to sort of standing there with her <laughs> arms yeah, paralysed. Exactly. <laughs> just that. How many were there? Oh, I don't know. There's probably about 12 or something, and then another five or six came, and then a few more. Excellent. Are you proud of her for going out and, you know. Pride's a sin. <laughs> well, okay. We're very yeah, pleased. You, you, we you, long you. to be out there with her, actually, but we've <laughs> been busy here with other things. I'd love to be out there with her. Yeah, should we give thanks? Yeah. yeah. Bless you, Father, for a good time uh, for Deborah and Matthew out and for this good food. We ask you to bless them both. Amen. 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 So, what, what have we got in this chapter? What's the beginning of it? What's, what's he addressing? What's Paul writing about? Each day before school starts, the family meet for Bible study. Andrew and Ruth use a traditional translation of the Bible, 
and believe in teaching the children that not one word of it is open to interpretation. This is written just a few decades after the church was born, after Jesus was uh, crucified and raised and, and, and <coughs> risen to heaven. And here, just a few years later, already, the gospel is being changed. But today, in the church, we see often it's, it's watered down from being, this is wrong, to, well, you know, that's perhaps not approved of. And to, Jesus came to judge and think, no, he came to show a nice way and so on. If you change the gospel to another way, no matter how nice it might sound, it's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our final authority in all matters of faith and practice is the Bible. And the Bible says to teach your children it. Um, you know, it says that you should teach these things diligently unto thy children. And so we teach them to our children. It probably goes over the top of their head, some of it. But some things we do, they understand. Um, they probably get some of what's taught. And, you know, another five years we'll go through the same sort of stuff again. And the stuff is laid down uh, precept upon precept, line upon line, and slowly it builds up a foundation of good teaching. Were you brought up in the same way that you're bringing up your children? No, not at all. My father worked out of the house. I went to, I went to school. Um, he then came home and, and passed to the church when he, when he got home. So I guess I had a little less interaction with him than, than my children have with me. And certainly I wasn't homeschooled. Every child is trained in one way or another. Um, even if you just neglect them, that's a training. But it's a different training. Um, I think we give a decent training uh, without being too prescriptive or constrictive, but being um, laying out what we believe to be the truth. Okay. Should we pray? Yeah. Dear Father God. Yeah. Dear Father God. What are you training them for? Um, eternity. Go on then. Good night. Put the Bible on. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as an hiding place from the wind, and a cover from the tempest. While the youngest children nod off listening to the Bible every night, Deborah prefers creationist sermons found on the internet. I like science. I'm not against science. I collect science textbooks. I have actually hundreds of them, and I really, really like science. But I'm concerned there are some things in these books that just simply are not true. I'm building a, a small nation. I've got 11 children who love me and love the Lord. We've got a team now. We've got a family team. Students are being lied to about the Big Bang. It's a big dud. It didn't happen. They're being lied to about the age of the Earth. The Earth is not billions of years old. They're being lied to about the caveman. There's never been a caveman. Dinosaurs did not live millions of years ago. Dinosaurs lived with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Matthew, can you hold that? Every summer, Deborah joins the rest of the Drapper clan to perform a puppet show to the unconverted at a nearby holiday park. Yeah. Right now, we're just dressing the puppets up for the opening song of the puppet show we're going to do. Um, it's, and the theme of the puppet show is going to be um, creation and salvation. Yeah. Should we put that up on the, in the tent? Oh, I like that. That's great. It's nice and big. Yeah. They absolutely adore the puppets. So I think they're really funny, and they can say things that that you can't. You can say things that you can't say to um, as well, a human being to people. Um, yeah. Controversial yeah. subjects. Yeah. All it needs to be. Uh, it's quite kind of what kind of controversial? Um, well, the gospel is quite controversial to start with. <laughs> but they've spoken about creation, which is often yeah. controversial. They've spoken about. Um, I must say they did something about the Christmas story, I can't remember what it was. Maybe they spoke against Santa Claus, I don't know. <laughs> yes, probably. probably something like that. Okay, let's have the uh, puppet theatre right out the way.
Father God, we bless you for this opportunity to come together and to uh, put our creative effort into sharing your good news. We thank you for the children around and for all that's going on, and we ask that you will bless us with more than just fun, God-blessed opportunity to share the gospel with uh, those that have not yet heard. And we ask, Father, that you would open hearts, because we can share all we want, we can talk all we want, but unless you open a heart to hear, then we're wasting our time to your glory. Amen. 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 And please give us strength to pop it with our arms. <laughs> and keep the rain off, Lord, please. Amen. 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 Hi there. God, what you know about? Welcome to Charmouth United Reformed Church Summertime Special Puppet Show! Fantastic. Let's just have a quick word of prayer before we start. Father, we thank you for uh, keeping the rain off and for uh, the number of people we have here and the opportunity to get together. We ask now you to bless us with your presence and you'd help us to worship you and to have fun. And uh, that your name will be glorified. Amen. So let's remember uh, his great creation. Let's remember how marvellously and wonderfully he's made it. The, the sun and the sky and the sunsets. In fact, it was perfect. If God judged you by these Ten Commandments, by his rules, would you be found guilty or innocent? Guilty! I think all of us know, I think all of us know in our hearts that we're guilty, don't we? We're not perfect. Anybody here know how to not break these? You can't. It's new children in your beds tonight or somewhere say, Lord, I need to get myself put right with you. I need you to forgive me. Do you like being on holiday? Yeah. <laughs> My children have been absolutely um, badgering me all day to come to watch the puppet show. And then I come and it's just too in your face. It's absolutely disgusting talking about Judgment Day to young kids. My children are very impressionable. And to be told that when you're in bed at night to think about all the wrong things you've done and God will judge you, I thought, what a load of crap. That is. I, I, sorry, but I just think it's just awful. I think with Mark's puppet show and they all come and then they have to listen to this, it was just too over the, it was too in your face, too over the top. If I could have got at them, I would have dragged them out. I was absolutely appalled. I think people can have their opinion, but I think it's not true. And I think that if when you die and you, you go to, he to heaven, to, to judgment, and God says you're a liar and this, and because of that, you're going to hell, that's a horrifying thought. It's not nice. I mean, you didn't like to think about it because you, would, you, you don't want to go to hell, do you? For eternity, in, like, in, um, in fire and weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's not a nice place to be, it's just it's a place where God isn't. And what if it doesn't exist? Well then, I'll die and I'll go to the grave and that'll be it. But what if it does exist? What will happen to you? If I die and that's the end, well then, that's probably a waste of my life, but I'll just be dead. If you die and there is a hell, you won't just be dead. Sometimes when I hear her talk about hell in the way that she does, I think for someone her age, it's, it's almost heartbreaking to me to see that she can look out in the world and, re and in her eyes and, you know, as, as we see it, there's so many lost people and she knows what's going to happen to them. And I think that sometimes maybe that could be too much for her and maybe she should concentrate sometimes on, on heaven and the rewards of Christianity rather than the punishment of non-Christianity and sometimes that does hurt me to see her in that way. It's such a big subject and I sometimes think shouldn't she be just enjoying her life a bit more and being more happy.
With summer almost over, Matthew's invited Deborah to stay for a few days when he goes back to uni in Buxton. Now that he's living away from the family, he wants to make sure she's prepared for what life will be like beyond the four walls of home. There's um, probably a couple of things that you probably haven't seen which you might be shocked by. There's um, everyone literally will have a drink in their hand, maybe two. The first thing that got me when I started going out to places was that I could not talk because the music was so loud. Honestly, I could not speak to anybody for the first <laughs> three weeks. Doesn't it damage your ears? And then, I don't know, eventually it began to seem, seem a bit quiet because you, you began to literally just shout when you were there and you could you Why could do they like so much noise? I think maybe some of them don't want to have conversations. And also some of the lyrics to the songs are a little bit disturbing. Um, what kind of dancing do they do? So it's like stepping back to the music and forward to the music and turning to the music and like twisting to it. A lot of people do. It's all about, you know, pointing to certain areas of their body and stuff like that. There'll be loads of people probably kissing. You'll turn around and, okay, somebody's kissing over there. Oh, somebody's over there. Okay. And oh, there's one of my friends and they're kissing. Okay, right. I'm going to go sit over here and just talk to myself for a minute. <laughs> just out of curiosity. I mean, if some, some girl just did happen to, like, you know, like, you know, flirt with you or whatever, how, how would you deal with that? Would you just, like, sort of try and pretend to ignore them or...? To be honest, it doesn't, it doesn't really turn me on. It make, in fact, it makes me want to just not talk to them, to, to yeah. be away from them. And so that's, like, the opposite of, of them doing it. Like, there was, this, there was this one time there was a mud party and everyone had um, thrown mud on each other. <coughs> and there was this girl who was, who was just trying to touch me. And I was like, no, stay away, because you're dirty. And she was like, yeah, I'm so dirty. I was like, no, just stay away. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even really funny. I think it'll be interesting to meet your friends and how other people act and things. Mm. I think they were really, really <laughs> excited to meet you, actually. Another That's person cool. from this crazy big family. Yeah. I think they're, I wonder they're whether really just excited crazy. about that. Yeah, I know. See if they're all as mad as me. Mad Machu. <laughs> Look out here and say, ooh. Ooh, big, big bang did that. Yeah, big bang. Big well, boom. Actually. Big boom. Big squish, big spin, <laughs> big boom. It happens every 18 to 20 billion years. Yeah, apparently so, so I'm told. <laughs> yeah. Here's my question, OK. Science. Define science, OK? Science is uh, stuff you can prove. Uh, science is like knowledge, basically, oh, right? Okay. Yeah. Science is two known. Science. Okay, so things you can observe and test and demonstrate and yeah. test, you know, again and again to get the same result. OK, that's science. OK, so here's my question. How can you test and observe and demonstrate the Big Bang? It's a belief. It's not science. Exactly. There's no scientific evidence for it at all, right? You'd have to need help to believe the theory that stupid. I feel really excited about it. I don't feel nervous or anything. I just feel excited. Just got to make sure I've got everything. Don't want to leave my toothbrush or anything behind. I think I'll wear this T-shirt here on the way in, on the way up. So I'll just leave that there. And I'll take this here because that's nice and warm. It's nice. I'm not very good at packing or folding. Yeah, you're going to pack the track somewhere. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll take them inside my bag. I'll take oh, okay. a bunch of them. More and more excited. I know, it's going to be great, isn't it? Bye, Mummy. Mm. Have a lovely time. Bye, Polly. Bye, Polly. You're going to pay for me. I'm just Father God, we ask you to bless him with safe travelling and for a good time up in Buxton. I ask you to bless Matthew with a good time, good term this year. Amen. 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 Go. Bye. Okay, we're off. We're off to see the wizard. It will take them five hours to cover the 200 miles to Derbyshire, where Matthew has made a new life for himself.
I am getting more and more nervous, actually. Look how little! Wow, look at all those rocks on it. I know. From it back is, there. Is, from back there, okay, it looked just like a hill. Mm. A bit sticking out. Yeah, I know. Look at so oh, the light. And it's amazing. Think... It's amazing in the light. This is the moment that I said, I am home. I am coming to Derbyshire. This is my home. Okay, yeah, hey, so look at that. Seriously, look at that. Hey, I like that there. Look at it, 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 look at it. Creative, I think. Matthew shares a rented house with two girls and two boys. They became friends in the first year, despite the fact none of them share his Christian views. Yeah, just that football, excuse me. <laughs> Matthew was so excited when he was coming over the hill. He was like, look, there's Buxton, look at the rocks. It was really exciting. It was really nice to him. Um, see where he is and meet all his flatmates and everything. They all seem quite nice, just met them for a couple of seconds really, but they make him, um, Lizzie makes a nice cup of tea. So Debbie's come up to have like a taste of university life. The girl will love it. They'll scare you for life, but you're gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's already been scarred for life. She saw Craig coming out the bathroom <laughs> wearing, <laughs> wearing just a robe. <laughs> right here, let's see. This was I'm afraid my life last year. Should we give thanks, Matt? Dear Father God, thank you for this good food and thank you for giving us a safe journey up. Amen. Yeah. I must have been about eight-ish, twenty eight. Oh, I was about like what was it? Eight-ish, twenty eight. Five. <laughs> I reckon I got 20 to 7. I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's not that right. I didn't know that time exists. <laughs> Do you usually get up at that time? Yeah. I usually read my Bible in the morning. Oh, all right. Mm. I'm seriously ready for bed now. Actually, me too. Hmm. Being busy. <clears throat> Good night, Debbie. Good night, there. Good night, Matt. Good Study your Bible like it's nobody's business. Just make sure that not everybody else in the world is a heretic. Matthew's keen to give Deborah as many new experiences as possible during her visit. So he's lined up a shopping trip she's unlikely to find in rural Dorset. Have you ever been to a big shopping centre before? I don't think I have actually. I, I think I went. I went to a couple of um, bigger shops, you know, in like, Dorchester or something like that. But I've never really been to a bigger shopping centre than Bridport, as far as I can remember. Hey, look up! Wow! It's pretty cool, isn't it? As Deborah has packed only jeans and jumpers, Matthew and his housemates Lizzie and Carly are taking her to find something for a friend's Hawaiian-themed house party. Isn't it huge? Yeah, it is actually. It's crazy. That hat would look so good on Amy, don't you think, Matt? It's really big. I know, we have everything. Hey, Debbie, look. Look how big the shop is. It's got like, an, you can't even see like almost the end of it down the aisles. It's crazy. I know. Huge. It's got, I mean... <laughs> we could spend so much money in here. You look like you're an angel in that. Let me check these dresses out. Is that actually a dress or a top? <laughs> it's technically a dress. It looks like a scarf. See, that could actually fit Amy. It's so short. And Amy's about, what, this big? I wouldn't wear something like that. I think it'd just be showing, um, you know, too much. No, I think, you know, it'd even be a bit too short for you, wouldn't it? That, yeah. I don't know anybody taller than you. I don't like the big belt on it. And, and I think it comes down too low at the front there. If, if it was maybe up a bit higher and maybe a bit longer down here, it, it actually looks like short enough to be a top, actually. I'd wear that on its own. 
Like, it's such a shallow life to be caring so much about what's, what's on your outside and how you look on the outside. You know, I have this amazing security. I mean, I don't care about what anyone really thinks about me. Oh dear, her hat's out of fashion. That's not really going to matter when the elements of the world is melting up. In the end, Deborah decides on a more familiar party outfit. Pink jeans and a top brought with her from home. Hi, hey, how are you? Oh, cool, yeah. Hello, how's that? Yeah. Yeah. Nice to Oh, okay, I'm, I'm actually borrowing it from Lizzie. Oh, that's all right. It's all right. You can stick with me. That's fine. Hiya. 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 Hiya.
What did you think of people drinking? The Bible says there's a lot to drink. So even though you saw last night and everyone was nice and drinking, <laughs> yeah. you still, they're bad. Yeah, they shouldn't have been doing that. Yeah, yeah, we still, we still believe that they shouldn't be drinking. Do you ever sometimes think there are so many things that I'm having to step back and kind of verify with the Bible that you think that maybe, you know, you that you're a different person to the, the Christian in you. Yeah, like, you can form your opinions yourself, you know? Yeah, you can form opinions yourself, but, you know, as God's the maker, he's got the opinions, and he, um, so he ultimately makes the rules for the world, and, you know, his rules are, don't drink. Do you have a boyfriend? Would you have a boyfriend? Yeah, I think, you know, at, at things like at the party yesterday, if anyone was attracted to people, it was so noisy, you can't even talk to them anyway, you can't, you know... How, how can you know whether you like them? It's really just, you know, what they're wearing and what they look like. So that's you, interesting because you call me superficial or whatnot, but I do tend to do that, you know, if I look around and go, do you know what? You're not bad. The person you marry and you live with, you know, for the rest of your life, you don't want him to be, like, second-hand. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. It took me a while to think then. Oh, I get that. Oh, I don't think... I don't feel second-hand, like, me personally. Like, you know, if I got a new boyfriend or something, having, you know that with people in the past, I wouldn't feel, I was second hand, that's like saying that I feel like an old jumper, you know, it's been like kind of thrown out or something. I mean, don't get us wrong, we're not pussies or anything like that, you know, you've got to have a bond, you've got to have a connection. As a person, do you think we're bad or good people, or do you um, think... Yeah, well, what I think is, you know, we're all the same, you know, even you know, the people who tell little white lies and, and, and murderers are the same. Obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, but does that kind of put me in the same, you know, I'm going to hell as well as, as, well as a murderer yeah. or a paedophile. Mm -hmm. So we all go to hell together. Yeah. I don't think any amount of thinking about heaven and hell will make me think that I'm a bad person because yeah. I know in my heart of hearts that I'm a good person, you know. No matter what, I mean, the Bible says or what anyone can tell me, I know that I don't deserve to go to hell because I am a good person. You've got the rights to your opinions and you... Res in a way, you don't respect us because you go fishing, so you do try to change us and we would never try and change you on your opinions. So I wouldn't mind, you know, if you said to me, you know, this is what I believe, what do you think about this? Because I, this is what I believe in you with all my heart. I want to tell you about it. I wouldn't mind if someone, you know, told, you know, was trying to tell me about their thing, you know, what they think. Yeah. The conversation that we had was pretty intense. It was, I mean, she's very kind of set in her ways, but I don't necessarily... I think that might change over time, you know, when she meets more people and she grows up a little bit more and at the moment you mean living with your family and stuff like that it must be kind of a hard atmosphere to think anything else really and to have any other kind of beliefs things like you know we're all going to hell with the murderers and the child molesters i think was a bit kind of it was that that was hard to that was hard to get my head around really so i don't think you know if we weren't as open-minded as some people aren't that could get her into trouble in the future If no one does think, oh no, what, what she's doing is wrong, then I'm probably doing something wrong. If no one's thinking, oh, she's so horrible, just telling me I'm going to go to hell, that's horrible of her. I don't like to try and make people upset, but, you know, it's good to make them scared about hell. I used to be like, you, you just can't say that to someone. But that was because I was not secure enough with myself to be able to say it. I've not gone up to almost anyone that I know and said to them, oh, you're a sinner, you're probably going to go to hell if you don't believe in this. I suppose that's, that's because I wanted to be more socially acceptable. And rather than seeing her now and thinking she should turn it down, I'm thinking I should tone it up, because she's an inspiration to me on that level. It's Deborah's last night in Buxton. Matthew's decided to take her to a student club night. Do you think it's been a good experience for Debbie, sort of seeing what it's like to live free, as it were? Yeah, I think um, it's been good. For, it's been good for Debbie to come up for a few days to get to see sort of a few different things. But I think, um, yeah, I mean, at her age, obviously, she's too young to just go out into the world or completely. So it'd be good for her to go back and get back into the stability of having a family around. I find it, in, you know, interesting, you know, to see your, your life and who your friends are and, because, you know, you're always talking about them. I think it's been interesting, you know, just to know, to know, like, who you sort of with when you're not with us and 
and um, you know where you, where you live and things. So it's kind of like made me know a bit more like what you do when we're not, you know, when you're like up here. I think you know if I ever went to university, I'd, I'd like to have you know love to have friends like as nice as your friends. Let's give this some more. If it gets if it gets too hot, tell me. If it's too hot, I'll scream. <laughs> Don't scream too loud. Mm -hmm. I didn't think the neighbours next door would appreciate it that much. You are right there? I certainly am. With my hair burnt on my head. <laughs> Carly, who's your favourite? John, Paul, George or Ringo? John. Who's your favourite? John, Paul, George or Ringo? I don't know who you're talking about. Beatles. <laughs> you OK, Matty? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. What was that all about? <laughs> Flow. Are you excited about the evening, Deborah? Yeah, I think it'll be fun. I think it should be kind of exciting to go and see this club that Matthew kind of talks about. Does he talk about it a lot? Mm, not a lot, but he does talk about it. He loves to dance. You can't get him off the dance floor now. I mean, well, obviously it took a bit of getting used to just the whole, like, the noise and the being out and people drinking and, I, you know, I, I would rather just sit and observe where I was safe. And then as I began to sort of know, get to know it a bit more, then I was able to just go out and sort of be with, like, stand near where you were dancing. And I was like, OK, I'll dip a toe in the water. Did you listen to any of the words in the songs? I couldn't hear them, they were too couldn't noisy. Because I think when you start to be able to hear the words in the songs as well, you realise that you shouldn't necessarily be dancing to them. Certainly me. Yeah. And yet, somehow, I like, always get drawn back to it. Like, sometimes I think, you know, well, it's kind of, you know, fun to sort of dance. There's nothing wrong with dancing or even having fun at a party. But, you know, sometimes if, I think, um, you know, if, say... I mean, if Jesus was there, exactly, I that's what I was thinking. That's what I just dance, kept thinking, you know, hey, is this actually right or is it actually wrong? What I mean, do you think? Did you is come it... to any conclusion? No. <laughs> because Jesus had the parties thing, the and thing things. Is, the weird thing is, though, you can feel it's not quite right. Journey, okay? I'll try. Yeah. Come back and see us very soon. 
I think when then we go home, I'll just carry on living life exactly like I did before. I think I'm living my life like I want to. I've given it to the Lord. Anything that happens to it is what he wants. I'll probably be dead longer than I'm alive. It's just a wee dash between two dates, where you were born and where you die. I, you know, it's not that much, but I've given my wee dash to the Lord. We are wretched, horrible people. I think I, Deborah Drapper, are a wicked person. But because God sent Jesus to die on the cross for me, it's amazing because... all my sins have been taken. When Jesus died for me, he took away my sins. I repented from them. I asked Jesus to forgive me. And he's forgiven me and taken away all my sins. Now, because Jesus has come down and died for me, I've asked him to forgive me. And he has. Brown sauce is the problem next on BBC Three as our experts try to fix another freaky eater.